humans were not made to live underwater. As you may have noticed, spending too much time underwater wrinkles your hands. Consider what it might be like to live underwater. The human body would sag as a result. Furthermore, because people are built for land, the muscles would deteriorate owing to their inability to work. My point is that in order to exist underwater, humans will have to develop. They must evolve into a whole other species. Growing gills is the first thought that comes to mind. However, this will not be sufficient to resolve your issues. There are many obstacles to face in order to survive in the water. So if you develop gills, you'll be able to absorb oxygen from the water. While still swimming with your limbs is rather difficult. This is inefficient for swimming because it consumes a lot of energy. Fins are required for a more efficient method of lurking in the ocean. You'll need a lot more fat to keep your body warm. Therefore, scales will be necessary. However, if humans are able to evolve their bodies to this point, they will have communication difficulties, as speaking deep in the ocean appears to be impossible. Furthermore, the deep ocean water will be extremely black, making visibility a major challenge. Don't forget about the deep sea's water pressure. For a moment, we can consider ourselves as aquatic species. We'd be terrible swimmers if we were aquatic. If we ever stepped out alone, a lot more of us would be eaten because of our unwebbed fingers and toes. Human groups would most likely reside in the cracks and fissures along the ocean floor, only coming out to set traps for other fish and collect the fish we caught. Clothing would evolve as a means of disguise as well as protection from fangs and sharp fins. We wouldn't be able to speak verbally, but we'd be able to communicate effectively through some type of sign language. We would write poetry and stories about frantic escapes and inventiveness in the absence of song in human culture. Our kids would all want to fight a shark or other animal when they were older. The fear of squid and octopus would be instilled in every child. For us, hot vents would serve as the start of agriculture and would carefully tend to the mollusks, crabs, fish and worms that called them home. When a vent calmed down, we moved on to the next active vent, leaving the traces of human farming applications and tools behind like dead coral. The first step in our investigation of electricity would be to collect it from the living things that use it to defend themselves in the water. The first battery would consist of an enclosed net of electric eels, rays and catfish, which would combine their energy to spin a big turbine. The directed whirlwind generated by this turbine would be the first massive human weapon. We would eventually create suits that could retain seawater and have lengthy pipes to keep the water fresh. We'd send our most capable aeronauts out above the ocean surface to investigate the terrain. Because of the heaviness of the suits, our inability to communicate and the constraints of our tubing, these expeditions would be brief and deadly. However, over time, we would gain a great deal of knowledge about the ocean's coastline regions and develop a written language that could be transferred electrically between the suit and the research stations below. We'd make a list of unusual bottom feeders and plants that lived above the water and postulate about a potentially unlimited realm above where large schools of other species may swim. We'd develop a taste for the flesh of terrestrial living creatures and would figure out how to fool them into approaching the water near enough for us to grasp them and carry them down for our meal. We'd also create long, thin fiber threads that we'd hurl into the sky, holding aloft far above the surface with our hands. We'd put hooks writhing with live bait on these, and any flying animals that consumed these gadgets would be dragged down. As a result, hunting would become one of our major human activities, which we would transmit to our children and take great satisfaction in the volume and diversity of birds we collected. Eventually, we would stretch the ocean inward, excavating excavations across kilometers of rock and soil to reach the heart of the land, finding and tracking more of its wonders as the equipment necessary to keep our skin wet and provide us with appropriate breathing water evolved, many of us would travel out on our own, heading further across the land and staying longer before going back to the protection of the sea. 
we'd send up submersibles with huge hydrogen sacs, sufficiently lift a comparatively small crew out of the water and into the air. Later, we'll add eel-powered robots to regulate the ship's direction, and we'll discover a lot about the terrain we didn't know before. A human crew would reach the planet Earth's atmosphere at the very border, where they would find a slew of lights, perhaps evidence of a larger ocean beyond the aerial oceans we'd investigated, as well as the glowing animals that inhabited it. With extra care, we would approach. All of these are, of course, only our imaginations. However, we can develop a different way to live underwater. Rather than undergoing total evolution, we should seek an alternative, such as establishing underwater cities. Humans may be able to live underwater if an undersea city is built. Although Shimatsu Corporation from Japan has only proposed a concept named Ocean Spiral City, they have recently come up with a really creative notion. This concept could allow humanity to live underwater, alleviating the burden of overpopulation and preventing environmental harm. It takes a lot of resources to put up something like this. As a result, this city would make use of the ocean's abundant resources. A massive floating sphere is featured in the ocean spiral. Blue Garden is the name given to this floating sphere. This would have a diameter of roughly 500 meters, and the biggest portion of the sphere is well below the level of the sea. The tip top of the sphere would be the only component visible over the ocean. The spherical or blue garden would comprise almost 75 stories with commercial, residential, hotel and research rooms on each story. Around 5,000 people may live on the sphere indefinitely. All of the infrastructures will be required to maintain normal living underwater. All of the functions required for the complicated tasks of work in the water would be housed in the spiral. The electricity will be created by converting seawater into thermal energy. Thanks to this energy, we could start processing electricity. After this, the main issue remains of food. Without food, there is no survival. Deep sea aquaculture would provide food. To achieve all of these, we would need fresh water for drinking. So some process will be needed to remove salt from the water to make it desalinated. There would also be a parking port so that the visiting submarines would be able to dock and bring different supplies. Underwater cities would be no more than 1,000 feet deep. We shall confront a significant threat if we try to develop cities and colonies even deeper. Maintaining such pressure will be difficult because the structures as well as their occupants will collapse, causing significant damage. Because you'll be under 30 atmospheres of pressure in the deep ocean, it means that the pressure will be 30 times greater than the pressure on the ground at sea level. The availability of oxygen will be one of the major challenges with undersea cities. We will still require oxygen even if we're able to get other resources such as food and shelter. We can plant trees, but we will require sunlight in order to do so. Artificial lighting, however, can be used to cultivate them. Because the risk of infection is relatively high, this air will need to be filtered. In such a colonial system, if someone becomes ill, the infection will spread quickly. As a result, large machinery to filter, clean, and disinfect the air will be required in these places. Living underwater may not be possible in our lifetimes, but it may be something our children or grandchildren ponder. With climate change posing a threat to our present cities and way of life, it's feasible that humanity will need to find new ways to live in the not too distant future. The notion of establishing a colony on Mars is becoming more popular these days. In the meantime, individuals overlook the potential of living near the sea, which is more accessible and livable. Why not make this habitat a home for our future generations? There are numerous challenges that I have highlighted, but if we can overcome them, we will be able to relieve the load of overcrowding on the Earth. So guys, what do you think of underwater cities and colonies? How do you look at the possibility of humans living underwater? Do share your thoughts in the comments section. If you like our content, do give it a thumbs up and share with your friends.